I would like to welcome you to this very important conversation today, the Plano Mayor Debate. I am glad to see so many of you joining us for today's event online and throughout the event. You can also send us comments throughout the comment section because we're going to be checking them. Now, as you know, we have three candidates running for mayor and today we're going to have the opportunity to really learn a bit more about them and what makes them the best suited candidate for this position, because this means a lot. But before we start, I would like to welcome Lori McMahon, director of government affairs at Toyota and Chris Wallace, the president and CEO of the North Texas Commission. Lori, Chris, if you can just go ahead and give us some words in terms of why this is so important to hear from our candidates. Lori, after you. Uh, thank you, Chris. It's it's great to be um, with both of you. And Cleo, if you don't mind, I'd love to first and foremost thank uh, the Chamber and CCBA, um, Sanjeev in um, particular, for putting this together for the city, um, for the residents um, in our community, because I think it is important, especially during this time of COVID, to have these conversations and to share information so that voters are informed and can make smart decisions um, about how their city will function going forward. Uh, what it's really important here is the city has been run by a terrific mayor who's had a great vision. And so moving forward, um, it's important for us to be able to carry on that, that legacy and for voters to understand that they need to select someone who has a vision to carry on the success of this city of excellence. And so looking forward to, to hearing um, the debate um, today, um, but the more that we can dig in and, and learn about what they plan to do long term, um, at first maintaining um, that city of excellence, as I mentioned, but then what's that vision? What's that, what's that four year vision? What's that long term, even um, past um, the time that they would be serving in office? Excellent. Lori, uh, you know, I could not agree more. And uh, we are coming off of a, a mayoral term where we had some great success. Uh, and certainly we want to continue that. Uh, now more than ever, we must decide where we are today and where we want to go. And what does that long range plan look like? And I think uh, the mayor working with the council in a unified effort uh, to continue that and to work with the great city staff that you have in the city of Plano is, is key. And I look forward to this discussion. And I certainly look forward to the mayoral forum. I too wanna uh, thank the chamber and the CCBA um, I think it more than ever, uh, as we're seeing nationally, uh, uh, state with the current legislative session and locally, I think it's so, so important that businesses are weighing in uh, when it comes to uh, government policy and the making of public policy uh, and even politics itself. Uh, I think businesses should weigh in uh, on behalf of their uh, stakeholders uh, and their employees. Uh, and the customers and the consumers in which they serve. So I look forward to this discussion. I appreciate being a part of it. Here's just a reminder to anyone watching us right now. We are going to be live tweeting the event and we're going to be sharing the best content. So please join the conversation, right? We're on Zoom, we're on social media. So you can follow us on Twitter at CCBA Texas and then use our hashtag CCBA Leads or CCBA Mayoral Forum. Those hashtags will work as well because we want your questions. So one of the questions that we're going to be asking our candidates is why do you think voters or what do you think voters are looking for uh, this year? And I think you guys would be awesome to kind of answer that question as well. You bet. Well, Cleo, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll jump right into that. Um, All right. I think, um, away. Thank you. You've got such great energy and it's exciting to, to chat with you. Uh, I think what's important as um, voters look at this, it's best to level set of what does a mayor do? What is their responsibility um, in city government? And I look at this first and foremost as essentially it's a board of directors and the mayor serves as the chairman or chairwoman. And then you've got your city manager, Mark Israelson, who's a CEO. And then you've got all of your board of directors, your, your city council members. And so I, I believe that when it comes time to public service, that when people are selecting someone, they're looking for someone who is a strong leader, somebody who is also a collaborator, who can bring together ideas and then attach that long-term vision that, that Chris and I just both spoke about, 
of needing to plan for the future. You've got the issues that you need to maintain today, but again, what is that long-term vision? And so you need that strong leadership skills that can essentially bring in all the ideas that are out there and figure out how to implement them into our city so that we can have growth and that's long-term growth. And consistency as well is important as pe people expect that in their city services. Yeah, excellent. Uh, continue the leadership that we had under Mayor LaRossiere. <clears throat> we have to have a unified effort uh, as Lori mentioned with, uh, with the board analogy, we have to have a unified effort with, with our city council. Uh, we, we can all come to the table and we can discuss, uh, and we may not agree at all times, obviously, and we have different opinions, but everybody's opinions are respected and whatever decision is made by the majority, we, we walk away, uh, we do work with Mark and the great city staff to implement those, those decisions. Uh, I think first and foremost, uh, in Plano and, cities across Texas, I think citizens are looking to make sure that they have financial stability in their property investments, whether it be homeowners, residents, uh, whether it be uh, businesses. There's a reason why uh, Toyota North America uh, established the U.S. headquarters in Plano. And uh, it's, it's so great to have leaders like Lori who can help weigh in uh, and be involved civically in our local and state governments and even federal. Uh, with her great expertise. But uh, I, I think citizens and businesses are looking for that safe investment like Toyota did when they moved here. Uh, it is a safe investment in the city of Plano in the North Texas region. Uh, I think, and I know we're gonna talk about this, a great place to raise a family, to live, work and play in a great school district that we have in Plano. Uh, and finally, I think good infrastructure, uh, that, that is key. And I don't just mean physical infrastructure, transportation infrastructure, that, that is certainly key, but the human component as well. We have to have a workforce pipeline, a well-prepared, high-skilled workforce pipeline to be able to take the jobs that Plano businesses need in the future and to make sure that we're competitive. And this, you know, we certainly are competitive when it comes to corporate relocations and retention and expansion of business. Lori, you know, when it comes to the elections this year, I mean, look at us right now. We're doing this forum via Zoom, right? Do you think the pandemic and how we've handled it here in North Texas, do you think this will be a, a platform for the candidates this year? Absolutely. Uh, we've all had a transition period of moving um, and, and getting used to uh, speaking to each other um, via video. Uh, but this is a great way for, for anyone to be able to connect with candidates. It's um, interesting about how you find um, those residents who are willing to connect. But if you're raising a family and busy juggling all of that, or you're someone who has issues with mobility, you can still connect with that candidate and get to know them and hear them and listen to them and ensure that that your voice is heard back on the Q&A portion of any of this. So not only will um, this pandemic um, have um, some impact on all of us, but there will be a silver lining here in that going forward, this will be a mechanism, a piece of technology. I think that will stay with us for the long term. We still will all crave and need to be face to face with one another and someday shake hands and, and, and hug and give a high five or a quick elbow. Um, but I think this technology is, is here to stay and it's something that will be incorporated in elections um, going forth. Great answer. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, Chris, totally. yeah, and you know, when it comes to, I guess, quality of life, when we're talking about services, restaurants, retail, all of that, does that really play into the overall prosperity of a city? Absolutely, absolutely. That live, work and play, uh, those components have to be there. Uh, residents are looking for that. Businesses are looking for that when they are looking at a corporate relocation move for their employees. You want those employees to reside around where they work and they're looking for those assets. And so we certainly must continue to maintain those assets uh, and now more than ever, uh, I think the council certainly should be looking at the economic recovery of these businesses, particularly the small businesses. I know at the state level in the current session of the legislature, we're looking at uh, liability protections from COVID for businesses. I think that is certainly key. But anything that we can do to, to uh, assist businesses in Plano and throughout the North Texas region, I think it, it's absolutely critical, particularly during this time, uh, coming off of a winter storm, uh, ensuring we have an 
that you know, you know that we certainly do not have another one uh, that would impact and interrupt businesses and manufacturers. Uh, but uh, that these these critical assets that we have in terms of a live, work, and play component uh, are key. Let me, let me also say just briefly, and Lori can help me build on this. Uh, you know, future growth and development is is going to be key. Uh, Plano uh, has uh, experienced and enjoyed steady growth over the last many, many years, and that that's going to continue in Plano and throughout our entire region and state. Our population continues to explode, and that that uh, that is certainly going to continue. So, what are we doing now to make sure that we are ready for that growth uh, with new development, with with redevelopment, uh, with uh, uh, existing businesses that and land that needs to be redeveloped. So uh, making sure that we have a plan uh, to, to tackle that and that our citizens embrace that uh, development plan. Uh, I think that is uh, key, that they are involved with it, that is transparent, but they are embracing uh, how we move forward uh, as a city. I think one of the things to add on to um, Chris's um, smart comments is the um, connection that needs to be made, ensuring that our state and cities have the economic development tools at their ready. Um, Toyota is a beneficiary of many of those incentive programs and use those in the sense of forming a partnership and knowing that that community wants them to come and invest in their city, in their town. And so up in the legislature at this point is a reauthorization of chapter 313 economic incentives. And we need to keep those moving as, as Toyota ages and as Toyota grows, um, we'd like to see other companies um, come to the area and having those economic development tools um, are important and having a council um, and a community that believes in those is also equally important. And so we want the tax base here um, in the community to grow not only for the residents that are here, but we also want those who are moving through the city of Plano to their jobs in other towns, um, or also those who want to come in and use our restaurants and our um, shops. We want them to spend money and time here as well. And so we need to keep up those restaurants and that lifestyle that Toyota and the others um, were attracted to back in the day. You know, there seems to be um, a lot of division in our communities for the uh, past few years. And this is just not in our communities, but this is across the country. Um, what can our elected officials, whoever wins these elections, do to bring our communities back together? Yeah, there's got to be a balance, right? Um, we have so many issues uh, out there that can easily and have easily divided us. The partisan issues, uh, the cultural division issues. Uh, but the main thing is we be we be transparent uh, as a community, as a region. We focus on diversity, we focus on equity, uh, and we focus on inclusion. And uh, those those components are key moving forward. Uh, everybody, everybody should have a seat at the table. And like I said earlier, we we may not agree, we may agree to disagree. But whatever the decision is, as we move forward as one unified body, and we implement that that decision moving forward. So uh, the, the diversity, equity, and inclusion component uh, has to be key in all decisions that council members make moving forward. Um, I think what's important in, in a um, word that I had used earlier uh, that I think is key here is the word compromise. And as I look at candidates and I look at individuals um, who are going to serve in a leadership role, it's about their ability to listen to the issues and then form a consensus of what is the best long-term decision for the city as a whole, for all of its residents. It doesn't matter one's age. It's, we've got a diver very diverse city from so many young students who are in our public schools um, to those who are uh, later in life. And so being able to ensure that you're meeting the needs of the entire community, it is a large task. It's very, very difficult. But as long as you have an individual and a team that is extremely transparent and willing to listen and then explain their decisions, I think our city will always be headed in the right direction. Absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Um, another question here, local campaigning. It has definitely evolved in recent years. Uh, what's your advice to these candidates on how best to reach out and talk to their voters? 
Lori, I think we can take uh, just to follow up on your last question. I think we can take that my uh, lesson down to the state legislature, don't you think? Particularly right now, with uh, 45 or 46 days left. Uh, you know, Cleo, um, forums like this are key. And uh, again, I applaud the CCBA and the chamber for hosting forums like this. Uh, it is so important that business leaders weigh in on local policy making on state and federal issues uh, as well. Uh, our elected officials want to hear from you uh, and uh, it is key. Uh, we are, the businesses make up a large portion of our tax base and it's important that their, that their voice uh, is being heard. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of old fashioned, but I think the block walking too um, uh, within uh, districts uh, uh, is certainly key to, it, it certainly puts you in touch with what the voters want. And it kind of brings you back to reality from time to time, uh, but it is uh, it is a big task. And uh, whoever the next mayor of Plano is has big shoes to fill, and they have a lot of issues to to certainly um, compromise on, uh, uh, as Lori well stated, and and to bring the council together and to make sure that citizens' voices are being heard. Well, Chris, I love your. Uh... Um, old fashionedness of uh, door to door walking, uh, that, that shoe leather um, that works. needs to be rubbed through and uh, um, is, is, is always a great thing. Um, candidates love to see uh, uh, voters and, and residents love to see the candidates. And so uh, I think that always works extremely well. Additionally, um, Cleo, to add on to your question, I think what's yes. really important you know, moving forward, this election is 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 literally right in front of us. Uh, early voting um, starts next week, um, and this will be over on May, on May one, and and we'll move forward with with a new team and and congratulate them all. And I think then it's about what do they do immediately following this election. And one of the things I always look to is do they plan on doing a listening tour? Do they then plan on going out? as the elected official, as the person then serving, take the campaign hat off and go in and then truly meet with groups and talk about what are the issues that are important and also explain what are the issues that the city is facing. You don't necessarily get that unless you are continually watching a city council meeting uh, when they meet twice a month. But I highly recommend that this new mayor do something like that, given the times that we're in, um, given that they're falling um, in um, Mayor Harry's shoes, um, who did such a great job reaching out to the business community and led in such a great way in terms of the economic development that, that he and Sally Brain bought this, brought to the city. And so I'd like to then hear how they are gonna lead uh, once they are selected for the office. Lori, Chris, I am enjoying this time with you. Do you mind if I ask one more question? <laughs> I promise sure. it'll be the last. Please. No, you know, please. I, I think it's, yes, I think it's important to note that, you know, the new mayor will kind of have to interact with the other mayors here in North Texas when it comes to Dallas, Salina, Frisco, Allen. How close should that relationship be? And does it really matter? Absolutely, it matters. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, when COVID hit, uh, the NTC pulled our 16 county judges together prior to the governor's executive order. Once the governor came out with his executive order, we started pulling the mayors together, Mayor Harry and, and others, uh, Betsy Price and Rick Stouffer, Fort Worth and Irving co-chair this council. And it's important that the mayors come together on a regular basis to uh, look at consistent messaging across the region, across jurisdictional lines. Uh, to make sure that we are implementing projects and policies in place that adhere to the orders uh, benchmark and, and communicate in terms of what policies mean from the federal government and from the state. There's any questions about them at the local level. So, so we do that today in Plano has historically, and I'm sure we'll continue to certainly be um, uh, engaged as a leader within our region. Uh, the, the way that our region is geographically structured and laid out, it is important that Plano and other uh, cities, large and small, come together in that unified effort. You know, Plano, Plano is not a bedroom uh, suburb anymore. It is a uh, economically thriving, uh, large city. Uh, if you take Plano and you put it outside of Dallas and Fort Worth, it would be a very large city out within itself. 
And many small cities would help feed off of that city as a hub city, very similar to what they do today. And so I think it's very important that uh, city officials continue to think regionally um, as well. Uh, it's, it's imperative for corporate relocations, for business expansion, and to make sure that our residents are receiving all the uh, excellent services that they will deserve. Yeah. Well, Clea, I would say uh, any new mayor, uh, not only do they want to look internally and take care of their city, um, but they need to look externally. And as uh, Chris said, they need to benchmark, they need to learn those best, best practices that are happening elsewhere. There is an opportunity as a mayor um, to also um, serve um, nationally as well in the U.S. Conference of Mayors. I know Mayor Harry did that and served on the Transportation Committee um, and was able then to learn what is happening around the country and how to bring that back uh, to Plano. And things of what to do and what not to do are both equally important. And so I look forward to this new mayor um, serving our city um, on several different levels. It's a big job and it's someone who needs strong leadership skills um, and the time and the energy um, to put into it. It really is a full-time job, uh, but I know that the uh, candidates um, that are out here today, they're all up to the task and each of them would do a very good job. Hey, uh, uh, Cleo, can I build on just one point of what Lori just said? Yes, take it so, away. Uh, we, are, we are right in the midst of a very challenging 87th legislative session in Austin. And of the 6,000 plus bills, uh, 2,000 of those deal with local control issues. They deal with, with how these are administered, how we administer elections, uh, how we lobby the legislature. And uh, local control uh, is under fire. And so I think uh, a big challenge and a big responsibility of our new mayor uh, is to make sure that we protect the city of Plano and what's right for the city of Plano. And like Mayor Harry has done for so many years is to make sure that Plano's voice is heard in uh, Austin and in DC when it comes to state and federal policy. Uh, I think I, I think that is key uh, now more than ever. Lori, Chris, thank you so much for spending this time with me. Our thank pleasure, you, thank you for your time. Of course, We wish thank all the candidates uh, best of luck in the race. Uh, we wish Same. them all best of luck. All right, so now Thanks, it please. is official time to kick off this event. So before we do that, I would like to invite Steve McSwain this time from the Plano Chamber and Ty Bledsoe from AT&T. We also have Sanji Vyajnik from the Collin County Business Alliance to share their remarks. Good morning. I'm Steve McSwain with Arta Travel and Chair of the Board of the Plano Chamber of Commerce. I'm thrilled to welcome you to today's Mayoral Candidate Forum presented by both the Plano Chamber of Commerce and the Collin County Business Alliance. You will hear from our friends at the CCBA in just a few moments. This program is made possible by our sponsors AT&T and Collin County Votes. Thank you to both organizations for their generous support. As Plano residents, we enjoy a high standard of living and an exceptional quality of place. Plano is also a global economic leader. We share a community with some of the largest corporate campuses in the world, and our city, city really thrives when we support our small businesses. Plano is a regional hub and a business leader in Collin County. We at the Chamber of Commerce are committed to supporting all of the essential components that create our prosperous community. The Chamber is proud to support and advocate on behalf of the business community and the hundreds of thousands of individuals who live, work, and educate in Plano. We believe in leveraging catalytic leadership to drive job creation, foster entrepreneurship and small business growth, improve community competitiveness, and build a network that allows for maximum community impact. And that's why we're here today. Thank you for joining us and being informed and involved in the future of our city. I'd also like to thank all three mayoral candidates, John Munns, Lily Bow, and Lydia Ortega. All three are here with us today, and one of those individuals will take the reins and become the next mayor in less than a month. We hope that today's program will help you make an informed decision on who will lead our community as we emerge stronger than ever from a global pandemic and maintain our place as the city of excellence. At this time, I'd like to welcome Ty Bledsoe, Assistant Vice President of External Affairs with AT&T and fellow Chamber Board Member to join us with a few words as our presenting sponsor. Ty? Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Ty Bledsoe, Assistant Vice President of External Affairs at AT&T and a proud board member for the Plano Chamber of Commerce. As a Chamber Member for almost 30 years, AT&T is a committed partner, sponsor, advocate, 
and community leader. As the Kennett Forum Series sponsor for the Chamber of Commerce, it is with great pleasure that we join the efforts with the Collin County Business Alliance for this Plano Mayor's Forum. Our partnership with the City of Plano is strong. Our commitment to residents, our customers, our partners with the City of Plano are evident and a great example of a robust and strong public-private partnership. With understanding, we at at and we understand the importance of community engagement through multiple avenues, like the Plano Chamber of Commerce, partnerships with the City of Plano, Collin County Business Alliance, and Collin County Votes. So thank you for providing us with this opportunity. Candidates, on behalf of at and I would like to say welcome, and thank you for taking the time out to join us this morning. Your passion for our community and your passion as a community leader is recognized, and we thank you for stepping up. Now, it is my honor to welcome to your screen Sanjeev Yaznik, Chair of the CCBA. Thank you for having me. Sanjeev, the screen is yours. Good morning, everyone. And uh, I'm really excited uh, about what we are about to get into. <clears throat> On behalf of the Collin County Business Alliance and the Plano Chamber, I want to welcome all of you to our Plano Mayor debate today. And I just want to uh, start this, uh, this entire event with three quick things. First, uh, a group of us business leaders uh, got together in 2011 with an objective that we can help with our businesses and with our outreach, we can really help all of our communities in Collin County become more vibrant and become more successful and become a, a wonderful place where we can work and live and we can raise our families. And it was not for the sake of business, it was totally for the sake of the community. And what we decided was we were going to work with elected officials to enhance their power to get things done so that we could move forward. And it has been just amazing to see elected officials, um, a variety of, uh, of, of business leaders, uh, education leaders come together to make a huge difference to this wonderful place we call home. Collin County is uh, one of the fastest growing counties in the entire nation. I believe we are one of the most vibrant, we are forward leaning and we are all together. So I'm really exciting uh, that we have been able to pull people together uh, through the CCBA, and I'm really proud of what we've done. My second point is about local elections. You know, a lot of people show up for federal elections, and we've got all these debates going on on TV, and we, we get really engaged in that. My perspective and the perspective of many um, of, you know, of my business leaders and other colleagues and friends is that our daily lives are more impacted by what goes on locally than even what goes on nationally. So everything starts at the local level. Local elections are incredibly important. Yet what we found was that there were more people even from Collin County, showing up to vote for the, the, the national elections than we had for the local elections. And so four years ago, we launched something called Collin County Votes. And we have been trying to bring candidates to stages like this so that everyone can get to know them. And then we've been doing other things like having videos and things that the, the population can look at so they can get to know the candidates and get more involved in local elections. We have been very successful. So from 2016 to 2020, you know, in for the general elections, we actually saw an increase of about 12%, but 
from 2050 for the general elections, but for the local elections from 2015 to 2019, we had a 120% increase in people getting engaged in local elections. That is fantastic. But I'm still here to say that that is not enough, that we need to, uh, we need to do more. And the, the Collin County votes, and you can go on the website, um, uh, you know, it was launched in, um, in, in collaboration with uh, four major cities that we have in Collin County, so Allen, Frisco, McKinney, and Plano. But I would really uh, encourage us to do everything we can to get our citizens of our county, and in this case, as we are thinking about Plano, our citizens in Plano, to go out and vote and be engaged. It is really important for all of us. And then my final point is I, I really want to, you know, I, I, I enjoyed listening to uh, Chris Wallace and Laurie uh, McMahon, uh, it was just fantastic um, uh, perspectives. So thank you for that, uh, Chris, and thank you for that, Laurie. And Cleo, you did a fantastic job just bringing out some of those uh, nuggets of wisdom. We are now going to go into the mayoral debate. Uh, I think both uh, Chris and Laurie mentioned that, um, you know, along with this mayoral debate, which is going to bring in a new mayor into, into Plano, we do want to thank Mayor Harry he has just done such a tremendous job bringing people together, not only within the city of Plano, but being a great partner and a collaborator with the mayors of all the surrounding cities and has just been an inspiration. So thank you so much, Mayor Harry. Uh, and with that, let's get on to our, our main item here, which is the mayoral debate. And so I would like to invite back Cleo Green to once again take over and help us commence the debate. Yes, thank you so much, Sanjeev, for sharing how important it is in to engage in local elections. So on that note, I would like to bring in our candidates for today in alpha order of their last name. All right, we have the Libao. John Munns, Hi, and Lydia So I will begin asking a few predetermined questions, followed by a few questions from our audience, if time allows, because people are watching us in real time. This is a virtual event. Now, the audience questions will be provided to me by the producers of the event. Now, we do have some time limits, just like any forum. So there's time limits on opening and closing statements and answers to question, questions, which I will be uh, enforcing. Now, time will begin as soon as I finish the question and call on the first respondent. So I might have to interrupt. Now, if time runs out, there may be an opportunity to fill in at the end here and candidates may not interrupt each other. I know that might be hard, but please don't do it. Now, questions will be read by me and the order of responses from the candidates. That's going to shift from each question and the candidates will have the opportunity to provide a two minute opening statement at the beginning and one minute closing at the end. So welcome, everybody. Hi. Nice to see you. Happy Friday. <laughs> Can you hear us? All right. Let's start off with our opening statements here. I'm going to kick off the panel with an opening statement, and you can include why you want to serve as Plano's mayor. I'm sure that's a very easy question. We're going to start off with Councilwoman Lily Bao. Hi. Hi. Um, Plano City Con uh, Plano Chamber of Commerce and uh, Collin County Business Alliance. Thanks, everybody, for organizing this. and. Uh, give us this platform to meet with the potential voters. My name is Lily Bao. I am running for mayor of Plano. It is my privilege to serve you on Plano City Council. Um, very quick, I came to America in 1991, just 30 years ago. I was a high school valedictorian. I graduated with some cum laude distinction from University of Massachusetts, and then a, a master's degree in computer science from Northeastern University. In, on Thanksgiving Day 1996, I was baptized 
and my life has since been transformed. That was 25 years ago. My husband and I are blessed with four children. Uh, two of them graduated from Plano West Senior High into, you know, East D, um, grade schools, elite schools in the country. And uh, we still have two more, one in middle school and one in high school. Um, it is very important that uh, whatever decisions we make on city council will bring positive impact to PISD. Um, I love PISD. <laughs> we are very grateful for all the teachers and the staff and the wonderful job they have done. Um, I always believe in servant leadership. Um, so I have served on many uh, commissions and boards. Um, I've also last year, you know, related to the pandemic, I have also uh, organized and volunteered with other people to bring tons of PPEs to hospitals, fire stations, police stations, nursing home, and all such, you know. Uh, one of the groups I was involved in, we received a recognition from our uh, Congressman Van Taylor's office. Um, a couple of months ago during the uh, February snowstorm, I mobilized and organized my church to open as a warming station uh, for people. Um, I also brought, you know, hot meals, you know, organized and brought hot meals to all the uh, 13 fire stations because the firefighters had worked really hard during that week. Um, Woman. You know, as the, your guests have mentioned a little bit earlier, it is important for the mayor Plano to have great relationship with the other city mayors or other elected officials. So I'm just quickly let you know, I have received the endorsements from all the Texas level legislative slate, such as our state Senator um, Andrew and Paxton, all uh, state reps. Now, your time is up now. Yeah. Our opening statement now from John Munns. Thank you, Cleo. Thank you, Chamber and CCBA for, for having us. We really appreciate it. I'm a 50 year resident of Plano. Uh, I raised my family here um, and, and I, I've uh, started a business here in 1991 and still have that same business. Uh, my kids went to Plano schools, I went to Plano schools and now I have seven grandkids and four of them go to Plano school. So we're, we're very entrenched in the city of Plano and we love Plano very much. I spent 16 years on the PISD school board, three of those years as president of the board. And in the last six years, I've been the chair of the planning and zoning commission for the city of Plano. So uh, my experience in chairing a, a body of eight members is almost over 10 years. And so I have experience with working with uh, other members of boards and commissions and coming up with consensus and compromise and things that'll make the people of Plano uh, uh, and listening to the people of Plano and making sure that we're doing the will of the people. Uh, we've always, our family has always believed that if you want to live, in a vib vibrant community like Plano, you have to contribute to its success by serving. And so volunteering and giving back to the community is so important. And I think that's why this city has been so successful because we've had so many leaders that have uh, been a part uh, of making Plano such a great place. And I wanna continue that, thank you. Lydia Ortega, you may start your opening statement. Thank you everyone for having us, hosting us. I'm really happy to spend this Friday morning with you, even though it's wet and gloomy outside, it's bright here. I'm an economist by training. I studied, I was blessed to study the works of Milton Friedman, Thomas Sowell, and Walter Williams. So I bring a different uh, mindset to the city council. One that looks at the long run unintended consequences of our plans. One that looks at the rate of growth, not just whether we're growing in the number of apartments, but how fast we're creating apartments because we have to assimilate these things. I know what it takes, what elements of property rights and the rule of law of letting people have individual choice. I know that those three factors are essential for prosperity. That's the only way to get there. So I believe that with my unique training, with my skill set as a public speaker, as a board of directors member for a corporate board for over six years, I know a lot about budgets, I know a lot about audits, 
And I know a lot about the responsibility of a board member, and that is to exercise due diligence on behalf of the stakeholders, not the shareholders. We're not talking about a profit company, but for the residents of Plano. You're the ones that we're held accountable to. You're the ones that we have to serve. And I know service sounds cliche, cliche, but that's my proclivity, folks. I do it naturally. And I'm already serving somebody a strong and larger entity fight. I'm fighting for uh, a business, a business that is trying to protest an eminent domain. They've been fighting this for four years. I'm fighting for uh, homeowners who are upset about a special use permit at a Rolet water wastewater treatment plant. And I'm fighting to ask the city council, do we really need a mid-year pay raise after the lockdowns, after the winter storm? I think Plano residents deserve a break. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ortega. All right, our, our next question here allows you to go a little bit deeper and really talk about yourselves here when it comes to qualities and experiences that you feel would make you the best person for this position. So our time is on the wall here and we're going to start with Mr. Munns on this question. Well, I appreciate that. I, I, I included some of those things in the previous question, but I will go back to it to a certain degree. Yeah. Uh, those 16 years on the PISD school board uh, were very important. It was during a growth period uh, that Plano had, uh, unlike uh, any other, and certainly a lot like what you're seeing in Frisco and, and Prosper and other communities to the north. So we had a real challenge there. And uh, we were able to build three, four, five schools a year at that time. And so uh, it, it was an exciting time. But where we're at today is, is more maturity and understanding that maturity and how to continue to make it prosperous for our city, for our residents, and for our businesses. And in the last six years, I was on the Planning and Zoning uh, Commission, and uh, we worked very well with uh, developers that wanted to come start a business, a small, medium, or large business, uh, single family homes, um, other type of housing to make Plano this great city that we all know and love. And that experience, uh, along with serving on uh, Economic Development Board uh, here in Plano for, for many years, has given me the experience that I think uh, we need in Plano to, uh, quite frankly, uh, continue our greatness going forward. All right, Mr. Mons, thank you. This next question will now go to Lydia Ortega. I'm really um, excited to be working to achieve a particular goal. I know that we've been able, the city council has worked very tirelessly to keep our tax expenses the same for two years, but that's the wrong goal. I want to decrease our tax bill. And I'm saying that very precisely, not the tax rate, not the assessment rate. I think we need to focus on the budget and Plano residents deserve a given level of service at the most efficient, at the lowest cost possible. It's the job of the board to make sure that happens because you all are business people. You know that you face market competition. The city does not have that same competition. It has to come from the council members who ask every day, how have we done better? How have we produced more with less? And that's what I think will pr produce us with lower taxes. Thank you. All right, thank you. Councilwoman Bao, you have a minute to answer the question. I'm the only candidate who has council experience in this race. I have served with the current mayor, Mayor Harry and council, together with other council members, we have set the strategic vision for the city of Plano. Plano is a global economic leader bounded by a sense of community where residents enjoy unparalleled quality of life. And that's how I have been serving you and voted on all issues on council. I have been supporting the police and fire public safety. My number two most important platform is to limit the growth of high density while I also support good projects like Collin Creek Ball and the third is I'm always pro-business. Regarding something that your guests have mentioned a little while ago, I have very good working relationship with other city mayors and uh, all the elected officials. I am 
uh, endorsed by Alan Mayer, Ken Falk, uh, Ken Falk and uh, South Lake Mayor Laura Hill. I'm endorsed by uh, State Senator Angela Paxton, uh, all the House representatives representing Plano and neighboring cities. Thank you. If elected, what would be your top two to three priorities? If elected, we'll start with Mrs. Ortega. So one of the ones that's not being considered is the one that falls in the shadows because people don't like to talk about it. But I've been out in the field door knocking and talking with the constituents and mental health of our young people is a major issue. They have uh, really suffered differently under the lockdowns, under the school closures. Parents are worried about their development. Parents are worried about their uh, socialization skills. When you stop socializing as a young person, it really has some brain effects. It changes wiring. So I'm already working with the club to bring practitioners, uh, therapists, to talk with the parents. We've got to help the parents first because they're the first responders to help the kids. So I really think of that as the most important assessment of what do we need there. After that, it's definitely safety and having redundancy, making sure that we have electricity redundancy and all types of support for our law enforcement. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ortega. All right, Councilman Bao. Um, I would consider um, infrastructure need is a very uh, big need of the city. 50% uh, of Plano roads are already over 30 years old. Um, in the this upcoming bond referendum on May 1st, uh, we have voted, the council voted for $264 million of bond package and the 64% of it, which is $231 million, are you know, infrastructure related. Uh, we definitely, this is something um, I'm pretty confident that the citizens will vote for it. Another big um, issue or very important for the city is uh, re a little bit related, but is you know how the city should develop and uh, uh, what's the direction we should go regarding the limited land, you know, less than 5% of available land, how we should develop, you know, uh, to be the best, you know, most welcomed, uh, uh, you know, planning and zoning development that uh, the citizens want. Uh, we have set up a comprehensive plan review committee who have worked in six, for 16 months and spent 3,000 hours, you know, trying to come up with the one that can unite the whole city of Plano. And I'm very hopeful that we can reach something very soon. Mr. Munns, if elected, what would be your top two or three priorities? Well, two that come to mind, uh, obviously we have, I, I, I'm, I'm sure all of us have uh, several, but uh, the infrastructure is really important to bring Plano up to date uh, so that we can revitalize uh, these streets that are 50 years old. And they're very important streets, alleys, sidewalks, all, all the above. The other issue that I think is really important is our economic development and continue to attract small, medium and large businesses. One of the real challenges I think the, the mayor and the city council will, will need to do is work with economic development to find uh, businesses that would be interested in the J.C. Penney campus, the EDS campus, the Dr. Pepper Snapple uh, uh, corporate uh, area that is now available. And so not only are we going to have to attract businesses for areas that we have available to start from scratch, but try to fill some of those areas that have been uh, uh, left. Thank you, Mr. Munns. Moving on to question three here, we're gonna start with your thoughts on development and the development of the future of Plano. Councilman Bao, can we start with you? <laughs> sure, I think I touched upon it uh, a little bit. Yes, development is very, very important, uh, the future development because I'm very pro-business. The three platforms I have is number one, you know, keep Plano safe. Number two, limit high density. Number three, pro-business. And, you know, the reason businesses all love and come and stay in Plano is because we have a great, you know, uh, demographics, you know, with great talents, you know, with all the people who have the skill sets that the businesses, you know, welcome and, uh, you know, appreciate. So it is super important that we keep the quality of life that you know, all of us moved here for. And that's why the development, the zoning decisions that we are gonna make is very important. It affects our schools, affects our traffic, you know, infrastructure, affects the service, you know, the uh, all the city staff provides. So I'm always, you know, advocating for 
you know, balanced approach, smart, uh, responsible growth. So I support, you know, good projects like Legacy West, like Holland Creek Mall, but I also think, you know, the most in demand that is very, um, you know, reflected from the hot real estate market is that we need small size owner base a single family uh, home. And that was confirmed by the CPRC meeting this past Tuesday, just yeah, three days ago. Well, that you, you, <laughs> you, you are accountable about. Thank you. All right. Let's give this question now to Mr. Munns. Well, I, I'm certainly in favor of doing what's best for the people of Plano. And I'll always prior toward, prioritize the needs of the people over developers. We always have to encourage businesses to come to Plano, but we want them to be responsible. We want to make sure uh, they're bringing a high quality product into this city. Um, when, it, when it comes to housing, we need fair housing and, and we need to consider that on every development proposal. We need to be thoughtful and intentional in making decisions on quite frankly, what little land we have available. And we need to always have a good balance of businesses and residents so that we do have that low tax base that we've been so proud of for so many years. Mr. Munns. All right, Mrs. Ortega. So I think that development and planning and growth all depend on identifying the key asset, that one thing that makes Plano unique. And I believe that no one really has talked about what happens to this asset. It is our service community. This service community is like none other I've seen. People live and breathe and just do service. It is the one time that we work human to human, irrespective of your race or your party or your gender, people are just working human to human. We need more activities like this. If it was never planned, it cannot be planned. If we lose it because of the wrong development or too much traffic or people can't spend their time with their family, so they decide not to do the service. If we do those things, we kill what really makes play the people here. It's not the city that makes us excellent. Thank it's you, not the makes us I work at the it's the people. Mr. Ortega, we are now out of time, Ms. Ortega. We're moving along to, to the next question. Remember, we have a minute each to, to fill each question. So I hate that I got to interrupt, but we got to keep going on, guys. All right, let, let's go to question four here. This is a big one. Um, what do you plan to do to help retain the businesses that currently reside within Plano, as well as attract new businesses who might be considering relocating? Uh, we'll start this question off with Mr. Munns. Thank you, Clea. We have a terrific environment to attract businesses. We have a low tax base. We're a very educated um, community. Uh, we have diversity. Uh, we, we have the perfect elements of uh, being able to attract corporate business. But as we said earlier, we, we have to continue to upgrade uh, this city. The city is, uh, our streets are 50 years old in, in, in a lot of areas. And those kind of things to keep your bones healthy so that you can bring in new developments, new businesses, and know that this will be a quality environment for them to live in is so important. And so we have to continue to renovate and revitalize the areas uh, that need that upgrade so that businesses will want to come, no matter whether it's you know far west or far east Plano, uh, that will be uh, an attraction to any business coming to Plano. All right, thank you, Mr. Munns. Uh, Ms. Ortega, what is your plan to retain businesses that currently reside within Plano and attract new businesses who might be considering relocating? I think this is the personal touch. This is reaching out as mayor to make a connection with those businesses to sit down and talk with them, to do a sales pitch. I'm, I'm, and I'm very working with C-suite level executives. I'm comfortable working with multimillionaires. I'm also comfortable working at the granular level with small businesses. So I can sell Plano because it, it has the assets that would make their employees happy to be here 
and to be fruitful and productive in the company as much as they are in the city. So we don't really have to sell too much. We do have to be the best community that we can be. You know, we have to have the roads fixed. We have to be uh, excellent in our performance. That alone will attract people because that's what the executives and their spouses and their kids want to have here. It benefits us all by being able to attract business and that's what I'll do. Thank you, Mr. Ortega. Councilwoman Bao. Thank you. Okay, very simple. To attract and maintain business, we need to maintain the quality of life in Plano. Three factors, right? Number one, we need to keep Plano safe. No business would want to stay if Plano, you know, lost our safety, you know, uh, the high or worse we are getting. So that's number one. And I have always budgeted and approved all the need, you know, supporting whether it's equipment or personnel need of the police department, public safety. Number two, we need to make sure we support our PISD. Most people move here, you know, for Stella's ISD reputation. Um, number three, we need to be very mindful of our zoning and, you know, the decisions because people are our biggest asset. I agree with, you know, another candidate that, you know, Plano is an amazing city, you know, it's very diverse. And that's why, you know, we welcome everybody to come here, to live here, and we need to, to provide that kind of welcoming environment to potential uh, population, and that will help the business to stay. Thank you, Councilwoman Bao. Our next question here, uh, what do you see as Plano's most important community asset for its residents and businesses? We'll start with Mrs. Ortega. I think I already touched on that, but give me the chance now to expand upon it. You know, when we work human to human, uh, it's very gratifying in terms of our own development. To be in service gives us meaning and purpose in our life. And there are about 180 religious institutions in the 72 acres. These 180 institutions all have very mm -hmm. complex missions and activities that make this such a vibrant area for you to help. But there's the Rotary, there's the Chamber. I know the Chamber does service. I know that there's the Elks and the Lions Clubs. I can't tell you how many organizations in this area are devoted to helping others. And that feeling of being able to go to your neighbor in the snowstorm, you don't think about what you have differences or conflicts. You all share something immediate, the need for help. And we rise to that occasion. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ortega. Uh, let's go to Councilman Bao. <laughs> um, I need to touch upon uh, one more thing. Another reason, you know, we are trying to make Plano, you know, more affordable and also more welcoming <laughs> to everybody is we need to keep our tax base, you know, taxes low. Um, I have the proven track record of keeping my campaign promises. I'm very proud to let everybody know that. You know, after I was elected in 2019, we passed the effective tax rate for the first time in 24 years. First time in 24 years. We've done that two years in a row while maintaining our quality of services. We have budgeted for all the first responders, public safety, all the essential businesses that the government should be mindful of. So that is very important and that helps businesses to stay and uh, just help, you know, mitigate the rising cost of housing a little bit as well. And another big, uh, you know, really asset and, uh, you know, what we are proud about Plano is that Plano, the people, our residents love to serve others. We have great volunteers, you know, they are involved in so many different projects, so many different nonprofits, and that they serve on a lot of boards and commissions and, uh, and Bao, thank you. Thank you. I know you're passionate. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Munns, let's go to you. And in terms of what do you see as Plano's most important community asset for its residents and businesses? Well, I, I, I want to go a different way because we, we prioritize our parks and trails all across the city that all of our residents enjoy and obviously our employees as, as well. And uh, our rec centers and libraries have, have become and are a priority to the city of Plano. The other thing that, and we want to continue to keep those uh, and expand on those as much as possible. The other area is that Plano has become a vibrant place for entertainment and dining 
and uh, so many areas of resources that uh, I think sometimes maybe we take them for granted, but it's, it's an amazing city. And we've become somewhat of a self-contained city that we, we don't travel outside of Plano for entertainment and, and dining and things like that because we have so many resources in that regard. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mons. Okay, I think we all know Plano is known as being a headquarters location, and it's a business-friendly city. It's also a great place to raise a family. But how do you balance those and ensure that neither really loses any ground? We'll start with Councilman Bao. Um, well, <laughs> number one, we wanted to, that's why it's so important, you know, the direction and the policies that we are making on council is to continue the legacy and the quality of life that we have achieved, you know, by all the good work, the prior councils, you know, uh, by our current mayor, you know, he has been really good in attracting businesses and uh, in supporting business and then, uh, you know, it played out such a great reputation for business community. I am 100% fully committed, you know, to continue to be a very business friendly study, you know, for, I mean, if I to become your mayor and uh, I have told him that and uh, I give you my commitment here and that is really important. Um, I, like I said a, a little bit earlier, you know, maintain all the quality services. Um, I agree with another candidate, you know, we definitely need to support parks and rec and our libraries. You know, those are all factors of the quality of life and uh, we want to uh, be able to keep that as much as we can. Thank you, Councilman Bao. We'll now go to Mr. Mun. So we, we obviously want to continue to attract businesses and, and work with economic development to bring in new companies, bring in new businesses, uh, see if we can find uh, companies that would utilize some of the properties that, that are available uh, right now that were previously occupied. And, and at the same time, when, when we talk about infrastructure, we talk about revitalizing neighborhoods because the priority isn't just businesses, it's also our neighborhoods and, and much like some of our older neighborhoods that need uh, revitalization that would encourage our residents and come up with programs that would encourage residents to uh, improve their properties uh, and, and, and continue to upgrade their own properties along with us upgrading their streets and alleys and sidewalks. So um, we, it's, it's a twofold objective is business and residents are a priority and we continue to equally uh, raise them both up. All right, thank you, Mr. Mons. Ms. Ortega. So what you're talking about are trade-offs. How do we balance the headquarter mentality with the quality of life and living in the area. And maintaining the quality of life is assuming that everybody's happy with their existing quality. There are people in this area, there are people on the east side that aspire to a higher quality of life. And so it is a challenging problem to say that we have excellent PISD schools for everyone because some do not have access to those schools or to those uh, excellence programs. And I believe that before we tackle the headquarters issues, we've got to look across our spectrum of diverse people and aspirations, looking at the individuals and seeing what can we do to have them gain what they dream to gain, to meet their goals. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ortega. Diversity and equity, they have definitely been uh, big topics in our community and across the country lately. Um, can you talk about what those subjects mean to you and how you would incorporate those priorities into the city? Mr. Munns, we'll start with you. Sure. Uh, I've, I've met with a lot of diversity over the last few months and listened very attentively to their needs, their issues, and, and how we can bring them to the table so that they have a voice and that the council can actually understand the issues and come up with solutions. So we do have a cultural commission that uh, is, is currently on there, but I'd really like to kind of pivot to a diversity commission uh, and bring up uh, all of our diversity to that commission so that they can have a real voice on how things need 
to be changed if, if in fact that needs to happen, whether or not uh, there's solutions that, that we didn't know about that we now know about and can, can listen and understand their issues. So uh, one of my main objectives will be to create a commission of diversity so that we can, we can understand the issues uh, of all of our cultures in Plano. All right, thank you, Mr. Mons. Ms. Ortega. From personal experience, I want to get rid of all the labels. You have labels about liberal, progressive, Republican, conservative, you're this group or that group. And the only label I want to go by is Lydia Ortega. That's who I am. And that's how I treat people. Not by your you know, exterior, not by what your parents did one night, but by what you've accomplished. And I want to hear those stories about the challenges you faced, how you overcame them, the constraints that were around you that maybe nobody else had. What did you learn? Because if we have these conversations, if we treat people as the individual they are, the unique genetic code of their parents and grandparents and things that were passed down generation to generation or from a different culture, then we learn something. Then we can grow as a city and really blend all of this knowledge and experience. And that's what I'm looking for. Thank you. Councilman Thank you. Bao. Thank you. Great question. Um, honestly, <laughs> I think uh, we should focus on how much we have in common uh, than what's different. America is a great country. You know, it's a melting pot. I'm a first generation immigrant. You know, I came here. You know, really, uh, 30 years ago, you know, when I came, that's the first time I've ever used air conditioner or heat. You know, I never had that before I came here. So, but, the, you know, we have so much opportunity, just everybody to explore your potential. And I really think Plano has done great in this aspect, you know, on diversity, uh, because look, you know, we have a great, you know, African-American mayor for eight years. And now, you know, me as a minority Asian woman, I'm running for mayor. So. You know, people have an opportunity to, to vote. And uh, I, as a council member, I have appointed, you know, minority, you know, group of people to our boards and commissions. So, you know, just uh, we plan to already have, uh, you know, international festival, you know, balloon festival. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of good programs already. And uh, it's true that, you know, we continue to want to encourage you know, people of diverse background to be involved. And that's why I'm so proud to let you know that I passed the, you know, ethics. Thank you, Councilwoman Bell. Thank you. Um, we now have some time before our closing statements to answer some questions from people that have been watching us virtually. Um, Mr. Munns, I think I'm going to start off with you on this question. This question is from a viewer. Hey, how do you plan to improve relations between Plano police and minority communities? And I feel like this is an issue that, in a conversation really, that is happening across our country. No, that's, that's, that's a great question. And it's, uh, it's very current uh, as we speak. I, I, I have a lot of faith in Ed Drain, our chief of police, who has uh, obviously the experience to deal with a lot of these things that uh, have occurred uh, throughout the United States. And I do support uh, our police to have the resources so that they can have additional training and education to deal with circumstances that maybe uh, they haven't really thought about until this last year. Um, mainly, uh, I, I want to hear from the police and understand their issues so that we can resolve them. I, I don't think they want to hear from the mayor to tell them what to do. And so the mayor is one that needs to listen and understand the issues. The police association and the firefighters association have endorsed me uh, for mayor. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very proud of that. Ms. Ortega, would you like to answer that question? I think that understanding comes through engagement. And that engagement has to be pre-planned, more active uh, involvement with young people from minority communities, with the parents to listen and talk. And we can set that up. We can get these organizations together in a fun way. Maybe we'll have a basketball playoff uh, with the police and some of the uh, youth in a community, just so that each one can see the other as a human, as an individual, 
as somebody that deserves respect and that they know that they offer it on the basketball court, at a party, then they'll expect it when they're meeting in a more dire circumstance, maybe where they're calling the police or they're being interviewed by the police. So that kind of understanding comes through connections. I don't think there's another cheaper, faster way to get that to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ortega. Councilwoman Bao, would you like to answer that question? Uh, sure. You know, like in any problem or issue, challenging issue, they are always, you know, like two sides of the coin. And I believe uh, two sides. One is the police department, definitely, they need to have the commitment and the uh, willingness, you know, to listen and to adjust and to make the necessary changes. And I'm happy to report to you as your councilwoman that I believe we have a great police chief, you know, Chief Drain. Um, he's very capable, he's very dedicated, and he has, you know, been making changes, you know, as things go by that's necessary. And the other side of the, uh, it, you know, aspect to solve an issue is that, you know, to, uh, we need to build trust. We need to build trust, you know, between communities and that that has, uh, you know, I call on all the community leaders, faith groups, pastors, you know, uh, you know, wh whoever, that this is the aspect or the front that you can help because the whole community needs to heal, needs to unite, and we need all of you to involve. Thank you, Councilman Bao. I'm, there's so many good questions that are coming through here. I'm looking through all of them. Here's a, here's another great one, and we can start with uh, Ms. Ortega on this one. A viewer had just asked, what is your position on affordable housing in Plano? Well, Plano has to afford it. So I don't believe in getting federal funds, HUD, or anything else outside of Plano to build this affordable housing. It is something that comes with a lot of strings. When we talked about having local control, local control means that we plan for our affordable housing. We make the sacrifice and that gives you a better metric of how much you want to spend for, you know, how much affordable housing you want to put aside. And then I would spend a lot of time defining what affordable means because affordable to you is very different than affordable to me. So we have to find out what we want to do with it, who's going to receive it and make sure it's distributed equitably um, across the board. Thank you. Councilwoman Bao, would you like to answer that question? Sure. Um, uh, one way uh, we on the council has done in the past two years is that we have, you know, really stopped the fast increase of property taxes, uh, you know, city taxes only, of course, that's what we are authorized to do. Now, before I was elected, uh, Plano city taxes has risen 40% in the fire five years prior to my election. And we have stopped that, you know, no matter how much your housing prices have gone up, you know, your property taxes as a whole, you know, for the city has remained flat. And that's what I said, first time in 24 years, that lowers the cost whether you are renting or whether you are paying mortgages and that make it more affordable. And of course, at the same time, um, we recognize there's a lot of demand for, you know, one first part of it is the senior housing, um, you know, for seniors to retire and still be able to, you know, stay in Plano. And uh, that is another need. And the council has voted, uh, you know, consistently, you know, quite a lot, I would say, uh, for uh, senior affordable housing. Thank you, Councilwoman Bao. Mr. Munns. Oh, six years on planning and zoning. The main objective for a PNC uh, commissioner is to understand land use. And land use is so important when making these decisions. And so when we're talking about affordable housing, land use has to really be considered. And obviously the Fair Housing Act has got to be preeminent to understanding what you can and can't do. But in regards to locations where that would be, would be areas where transportation's available, where resources are available, where schools are available for these people. And so we, we have to take in consideration these kind of uh, areas that would be uh, appropriate for these. Uh, type of facilities, whether it be low density or, or, or an apartment. And so uh, I think it's really in, incumbent upon us to understand uh, what has to happen before uh, we move forward with something like this. 
Thank you, Mr. Mons. And now we have just enough time here for our closing statements from each candidate, which again is a minute each. And we'll start with Ms. Ortega for your closing statements. There are so many issues that Plano has to deal with. I know I have the skill set and the problem solving ability to see unique solutions. But one of the ones that I want to work on most is your property rights. Uh, that to me is an issue that Texans care dearly about. And you know that your home is uh, not even your property, uh, even after you pay off the mortgage, because you still have to pay those taxes on it. And that's causing a lot of anxiety with our residents. I want to make sure that if you bought a property next to a piece of land that was zoned one way, it doesn't change so that you now have neighbors in two story, three story buildings that look into your backyard because that takes away your property rights. That weakens your predictability over the value of your property. And I really believe strongly in the sanctity of property rights and the individual choice made when you bought that property, knowing what it was zoned for next door. Thank you. Councilwoman Bao. <laughs> um, I'm a first generation immigrant. I have never ex imagined that my journey for American dream would one day take me to run for mayor. Um, this is only possible in a diverse and amazing city like Plano. Um, I'm very honored to have received the Dallas Morning News endorsement who called me that Lily is competent, ethical, experienced. She's an immigrant with a compelling personal story of hard work and pursuit of the American dream. I have fought for your interests, delivered my campaign promises, kept your taxes flat, and have limited high density growth. And I'm ready to take the baton from our current mayor and to continue the good work that past councils have done. I, my last name, Bao, means protect and preserve. I'm running because I love this great country. I love the city of Plano, and I'm ready to lead the city, protect Plano for the quality of life and for families, free, freedom, and prosperity. Lily Bao for mayor, May 1st. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Bao. Mr. Munns, your closing statements. Thank you. I'm running for mayor because I love this city. My endorsement list contains five former mayors, 18 former council persons, uh, three former uh, city managers, three former superintendents, and 14 former uh, PISD board members. And the reason why I tell you this is because these are the folks that have made Plano great. I've worked with these people over the years to make Plano the great city it is today. I want to continue the great legacy that the city of Plano is the city of excellence. I'll be objective. I'll listen to the people of Plano and I won't listen to special interest groups. I will listen to learn not to respond. Thank you so much for having us. Well, thank you, Mr. Munson. And thank you all. I would like to thank, thank all you. of you guys. Of course, thank, thank you, you for joining us uh, this morning and once again for taking your time out to participate in this debate and really just sharing your views and some very important topics that impact our day-to-day -day lives. Um, we're going to keep this conversation going on Twitter. A lot of you have been sending in your questions using that hashtag CCBA leads or CCBA mayoral forum. May 1st is the day. Once again, thank you all for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you for the great questions. <laughs> Thanks for answering them. We're now going to turn <laughs> things over to Steve, who's backstage waiting to give our closing remarks here. Thank you, Cleo. We appreciate you taking the time to be with us this morning and moderating such an engaging and exciting mayoral candidate forum. We know your time is precious at WFAA, so thank you for supporting the Plano Chamber of Commerce and Collin County Business Alliance in this morning's endeavor. I also want to extend my deepest gratitude to the candidates for joining us this morning. Lily Bao, John Munns, and Lydia Ortega. Your commitment to your city is evident and your passion is greatly appreciated by the citizens of Plano. This program was made possible by our sponsors, AT&T and Collin County Votes. Thank you to you both for your generous support, not only to our organizations, but the residents, businesses, both large and small, and community leaders in Plano. As Plano residents, we enjoy a high standard of living, and as a global economic leader, we share a commitment to keeping Plano the city of excellence. Plano has proven itself time and time again as a regional hub, a business leader, 
epicenter for growth, and a great place to call home. So the Chamber is proud to support and advocate on behalf of the business community and the hundreds of thousands of individuals who live, work, and educate in Plano. We are also appreciative of our relationship with Collin County Business Alliance. Thank you for collaborating with us to leverage catalytic leadership that allows us an even greater opportunity to make an impact on our community. We hope today's program helped you make an informed decision on who, you, who will lead our community as we emerge stronger than ever from a global pandemic and maintain our place as the city of excellence. At this time, I would like to welcome Sanjeev Yajnik, the chairman of the CCBA, back to the screen. Good afternoon and have a great day. Sanjeev? Steve, thank you so much. And uh, I've got to tell you our uh, partnership with the Plano Chamber has been fantastic and your leadership has been evident all the way through. So thank you. Uh, I just want all the viewers to remember that you have a very good resource in Collin County votes. So please use that resource to learn more about the candidates and make informed decisions. Um, I also uh, want to thank our sponsor, at and um, and uh, it's just such a vibrant community that we have here in Collin County with the businesses, the elected officials, uh, educators, and our nonprofit organizations all coming together to make it more vibrant. Um, I, uh, I definitely want to thank all of our candidates. That was fantastic uh, and a wonderful debate. Uh, and then finally, I want to um, I want to thank Cleo. Cleo, you brought this entire event to life all the way from the panel discussion uh, right in the beginning uh, with uh, with Chris and with uh, with Lori, and uh, all the way through to the to the discussion with the candidates. Thank you so much, and everyone stay safe, and we'll see you all around.